The fine people over at HBO are working on producing a new series that will air after Game of Thrones is done with its stint. It is known as Confederate, it will be a drama and the whole premise of this new series is what America would be like if the Confederates were able to secede from the United States and we had two different lands with two different priorities and principles. And so understandably, there's been a lot of criticism toward this idea. And I wanna go ahead and read a little bit of those criticisms and then we'll kind of discuss what we think about it. So one person writes, and by the way, this is actually Ira Madison from the Daily Beast. This is white nonsense. We finally had an Oscar ceremony where a black film won best picture, Moonlight, without having slaves or servants in it. But I guess HBO's eyes are still fixated on 12 years a slave. Another individual tweets that it's exhausting to think of how many people at HBO said yes to letting two white men envision modern day slavery and offensive, okay? So the two white men that that person was referring to is David Benioff and also D.B. Weiss. And they are the two men behind it. But it's also important to keep in mind that the two prominent writers behind this series are black. And they are in complete agreement over how important this series really is because it brings up a discussion about race that needs to happen. And so I want to kind of get your thoughts before I read the thoughts of those writers. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's kind of seen that way. Mm-hmm. And it sort of follows from a creative standpoint that Man in the High Castle series, which is associated with what would happen if Nazi Germany had actually Conquered work. the world with right and 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 That's taken right. over, uh, so in a sense, even creatively, it's derivative of that. If you want to look at it that way, and that was that was done, I think with with minimal resistance. You were uh, you would be uh, hostily uh, greeted with that on Twitter because the point would be that that's not the same. And I would agree that while it's certainly you say creatively derivative, no question that it is. Um, uh, we just talked about this, Jr. and uh, and uh, Michael and Jenk and I on uh, old school this week, the day that it uh, the day that it happened, and and because uh, uh, the reaction was so quick, and and Jr. is a much better position than I to talk about that reaction. But I did think that one of the problems with Twitter, one of the great things about Twitter, is the immediate reaction we get. But like all that was announced was that we're going to do the show. We don't know what the show, right? How, how the show is going to be portrayed. I am. As positive as I can be, that the heroes, at least, of this show, I get that the part of what the what, of, of the objections on Twitter were the imagery. Mm-hmm. But we know who the heroes of the show are going to be. There's no there's no question they're going to be you know, runaway slaves or people from the regular America that the South seceded from, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and I imagine that it is not going to show. Well, I don't know what it's going to show, but we know I'm sure the heroes are going to be the right guys, right? Mm-hmm. But the point that like that guy from the Daily Beast had, Ira Madison, was that that the, he found some objection to just the 12 Years a Slave, which I know you haven't seen because you don't watch anything on a screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, but you 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 understood that reaction, right? Yeah, without trying to get because we talk about it extensively again on old school, but um. It's just the, the there's the way art works as far as television, movies, and all this stuff goes is it's ends up influencing society. We already know that. So a lot of people who may be against this are worried about how we already have people who reenact the Civil War and wish that the South had won, and they're like, oh, we would rise up and we'd be this and we'd be that. So you wonder how would this world have existed this long if it was such a dysfunctional world? So you're starting from the premise of it would have to be functioning some kind of way off this basis of slavery continuing that never continued. So it's already given props just for it existing. And there's enough people in society that wished it had, they're like, oh my God, I can't wait to watch this to see how awesome this is gonna be because this is what I've been hoping for for so long. And number two, the way it would have existed, and this is my own assumption, would have been um, continuing to enslave people. And we complain a lot of times on this show about how we sort of enslave people, prisons, yep. we still specifically target certain groups of people. So we kind of had that system with just a few people at the top with all this money and continuing to change the system from the judicial to financial to make sure certain people stay lower. We kind of have aspects of that now and it's offensive um, to then make it a bigger thing. And how would these heroes become? 
heroes, they probably get some help from other people that look like the people in power. It's why a lot yeah. of folks don't like things that happen in like, we talked about Django. Like, yeah, like, Django needed help from the white guy. So there's always a white savior. This is, this is the same message. We've seen this movie, is all I'm although, saying. Although Django was different than like, you know, like Mississippi Burning. I mean, for years and years, the, the story of the civil rights movement was always told from the heroic whites who's, who were on the right side, as opposed to the, the people who led the civil rights movement who it was affected by. And that was, has always been a, a, a shortcoming of Hollywood. But that has started to change. I don't, you know, I, I didn't come out of Django thinking, um, that, that the white savior was terribly relevant. That seemed to me to be a story about Jamie Foxx's character, mm -hmm. about Django and mm -hmm. Django seeking and getting revenge. Um, but I hear it, then there was black criticism of Django, right? Definitely, no, uh, and, uh, so the, they are careful to point out that, they, that the show wouldn't be wish fulfillment for mm -hmm. white supremacists. Um, yep. And you know, artistically, Look, if you know, one of my objections to Hollywood censoring itself with the production code starting in 1934 so aggressively, whereas that never happened in books and it didn't happen in plays. So somehow, like America was okay to go see a play where there was a prostitute, but you couldn't have it in a movie. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a book, and maybe this is based on a book, but a book where this happened, a series of books, no one would complain about, right? But somehow we put it on a TV show with the Game of Thrones guys, which means it has instant credibility and instant stature on this, unbelievably, on the signature network on television, HBO. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it different. And I'm not sure it should be different. And I, not coming at it in any way as a, obviously, I'm not black, I don't mm -hmm. have that same history. I just think creatively, it's interesting. And if done right, my sense is it can do some good but I'm not sure people should listen to me. I guess that's what I am coming down with also. And by the way, just on Ben's point, I think the reason that we're so tough on television is because frankly, we celebrate television and movies. We don't celebrate books and the written <laughs> word in this culture right now. And right. we likely aren't going to get back to celebrating. Oh no, we'll get back to it. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's imminent, Mark. The thing yeah. that makes an impact on the culture uh, is television and yes. film. So. Uh, as I said before, it's derivative already of, a, of, of, of another scenario, but, but more radioactive for all the reasons that JR yeah, totally. has pointed out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely- right, There's no Jewish Lives Matters movement right now, because there doesn't need to be. Right. Um, and there needs to be a Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so hence the reaction to it. And I, you know, they're, they say they're going ahead with it. Yeah, anyway, and, 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 and they're also, look, they're going ahead with it. And they're excited, but also a little terrified because you're right. Like to do something like this and really pull it off, you have to do it right. And I feel like, look, nothing has been really released about this other than the fact that, hey, we're working on this show. So we don't really know too many details. And so I kind of want to reserve my criticism until I see what they come out with. And that's um, not what Twitter's for. I know, that's definitely not what Twitter's <laughs> for. Um, but I do know one thing, and there is a significant portion of this country that doesn't really seem to remember or understand That's or has right. never learned about what actually happened during our war, our civil war. Um, and the war of northern aggression you speak of. Yeah, th and that's what I'm, th I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. really what I'm talking about. So I think that this could potentially be a really important educational we experience for a part of this country that doesn't really understand what that war was about, or at least they might pretend to not understand what that war was really about. We had in our discussion on Old School JR, I thought one of the best parts of it was the, the a reminder of like, yeah, we don't understand or appreciate. It's okay every five years, 10 years, 15 years to remind people of the brutality of slavery mm -hmm. in a way that makes a difference. And seeing something visually depicted makes a difference. Definitely, um, yeah. uh, You know, roots changed. My, I assume I would have come to this outlook anyway, but for guys of Mark and I at our age, Roots was like getting hit in the face with a baseball bat, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I remember every part of it. I remember every night talking about it and watching it and being, you know, edge and sickened by it. Mm -hmm. So, some good, uh, uh, and I'm sure if I saw Roots again now, I'd, there would be some flaws with it. But mm -hmm. at the time, it was it was pretty powerful. So yeah, and it was an emotional assault. It That's really, right. And this so, could be the same thing. Right, exactly. Might, so right. this thing, last thing, I'm sorry, Anna. Mm -hmm. um, so the emotional assault will come and change some people is the hope, right? Um, people who have seen this, again, seen this over and over again, we still see it with people getting murdered in the streets by some cops, then we don't want to keep having to see it. 
So we've seen it. We know. We're like, Jesus, how much more entertainment are you going to get off of uh, replaying lynchings and replaying rapes and replaying whippings? Shit, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see it anymore. It's visceral now for yeah. a lot of people. And also, even just the tapes, the current tapes of someone getting murdered in the street and getting choked out, and then they're saying, stop resisting, and they shoot somebody in the back. We go, we know this happens. Why do I need to tape it and show my people's murder on television for you to believe me. Yeah. So you have to be entertained and then change before you believe what I've been telling you for decades. And it's yeah. just, it's frustrating. Well, yeah. so I hear you. But like, so that's why I, I wouldn't be like, stop production. Just probably not gonna watch it, that's all. I'm, I'm not so You weren't gonna watch, watch it. anyway, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Right. By the way, I, I promised uh, that I would share the thoughts of uh, the black writers behind this show, and I yeah. wanna make sure I do so. So Malcolm Spellman uh, and Nichelle uh, Spellman are both writing for this program, and Malcolm uh, said the following. It's deeply personal because we are the offspring of this history. We deal with it directly and have our entire lives. We deal with it in Hollywood, we deal with it in the real world when we're dealing with friends and family members. And I think Nichelle and I both felt a sense of urgency in trying to find a way to support a discussion that is percolating but isn't happening enough. As people of color and minorities in general are starting to get a voice, I think there's a duty to force this discussion. Yeah, I think they're right. Obviously, it's you know they they have a financial stake in making sure the show right. goes ahead. Wow, but I, cynical but, Ben. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I, but I, but I think that again, we we tend to respond to the loud, the angriest, loudest voices on Twitter, and and I don't think those voices are wrong. And Jr. I think said it really nicely. Like it's just frustrating. Like mm -hmm. there's some initial just frustrating. Like why do we need to see this you know, ben, again? I'm gonna watch it. Well, if you watch it, then we're, you're coming on our reviews of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whenever the show could be going like 2020. I just got to get HBO for the first um, time. You can use my. Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, uh, real quick, uh, it's worth mentioning that some of the frustration boils over because there's a show on WGN. Tribune, uh, owned by Tribune uh, Underground, which has been on for two years, uh, uh, was their biggest show. I don't know, the ratings declined a little bit, but about the underground movement, the underground slave movement during the during the Civil War, and the stars are all black, and it's mm -hmm. about uh, it's about the Underground Railroad. I haven't seen it. Uh, I saw one episode; it was really good, um, but I didn't follow up. But it was I saw an episode in the middle. So WGN has canceled that show. It's produced by John Legend, mm -hmm. EP'd by John Legend, and. Um, it, the Tribune company canceled that, but Tribune didn't really cancel it. Sinclair did because Sinclair, oh, the worst company in wow. America, oh bought God. Tribune and said right away, "This." But what was the quote? It was like, "This, this doesn't fit with our with what we're going wow. forward." Yeah. So, uh, Legend has been shopping the show to other networks. It's it's been critically praised, um, and so uh, we were kind of half kidding, but we thought, you know. HBO should pick that up. Yeah, like oh, yeah. you know that. Right, was, right. That now's was, the time. Right now, Play him now, on the right. Friday night lineup. Strictly yeah. uh, <laughs> communication geniuses like Anthony Scaramucci would tell you to <laughs> pick that show up. So uh, hopefully they'll find another outlet uh, for that show because it's a good show and it's an important show. And uh, um, uh, uh, but I'd be very interested as to whether this criticism, this backlash against Confederate, uh, lasts or mm -hmm. was just a you know seventy two hours on Twitter. Or, or whether it really impedes production on this show. And you'll know by, essentially, one way to know will be what the Spellmans do. Like if they back out, then that show's probably done. And I don't right. know that Benioff and Weiss wanna take all this goodwill and credibility they have from Game of Thrones and spend all their political capital. Yeah. That would be interesting yeah. to follow. Support independent media. Come join us at the Young Turks, tytnetwork.com slash join.